Ruth. And I'm Darren. Of the Rad Adventures Network. Welcome to Convention Correspondence. We have another treat for you today. Our friend Austin Appleby recently attended an amazing event called Secret Cinema in London. Secret Cinema specializes in live events that include a screening of a popular or significant movie. But in advance of seeing the film, guests enter the world of the movie through sets that recreate parts of the film, where they interact with actors performing characters based on the movie. So guests actually become part of the world of the movie. The event Austin attended was based on Blade Runner, which is a favorite film of ours, and it sounds amazing, and we hope you enjoy listening. Austin is going to tell us lots more about Secret Cinema right after this promo for something fun you may enjoy. Alexander Hamilton, Aaron Burr. If you're a history lover or a musical lover, you probably know about both Hamilton and Burr's rise to power in the early stages of American history and their infamous duel. But what if you didn't know the full story? What if one of them was a werewolf? White Rocket Entertainment proudly presents a 48-page full-color comic book, Hamilton vs. Burr, A Werewolf Tale. Written by Jared Albrecht, the yard sale artist. Art by Nate Niles. Colors by Ace Wheelie and Ken Solomon. Letters by Percival Constantine and edited by Johanna Albrecht. Hamilton vs. Burr, A Werewolf Tale. Available digitally on Kindle and Comics Central. C-O-M-I-X Central. Prefer a print copy? Hamilton vs. Burr, A Werewolf Tale, along with my other published works, are available at theyardsaleartist.big cartel.com that's the yard sale artist or you can buy it directly from me creator jared albrecht the yard sale artist at any of my comic con appearances hamilton versus burr a werewolf tale get your copy today you won't regret it don't take my word for it here's what ming chen from amc's tv series comic book men had to say about it i really enjoyed it a lot of great werewolf scenes in here a lot of great uh, this is how I wish history would be told to kids. <laughs> <laughs> Books like a- a Hamilton vs. Burr, A Werewolf Tale. That's Hamilton vs. Burr, A Werewolf Tale. Greetings, Ruth and Darren. It's Austin, and this is my audio diary of Secret Cinema's Blade Runner The Final Cut. The origins of Secret Cinema started back in 2007 and they present large-scale interactive movie events at an undisclosed location. And when I say interactive, when you become part of this, you get immersed in the movie. You become a character and you experience the film. Some of their past productions include The Third Man, Back to the Future, Moulin Rouge, Prometheus, and your own personal favorite, Darren, Dr. Strangelove. My first experience of Secret Cinema dated back in 2015 when they launched Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. And I have to admit, the event blew me away so much that I knew I was, I was going to do another Secret Cinema event. For those of you unfamiliar with the movie, Blade Runner is a 1982 neo-noir science fiction film directed by Ridley Scott and stars Harrison Ford, Rutger Hauer, and Sean Young. I first found out that Secret Cinema was going to do Blade Runner early this year, 2018, and would be running from March through the beginning of July. When I was searching for tickets, I found out that many of the weekends were sold out, but I was able to snag some tickets for Friday, the 25th of May at 1800. Ticket prices started at 45 pounds and went up to 150 pounds if you wanted a VIP ticket. Once you purchased a ticket, you were asked to join the Utopia group. To me, the Utopia Group felt a little bit like a company co-owned by the Tyrell Corporation. From there, they would assign you a character. And to do that, you'd have to take a Voight Comp Test. For those unfamiliar with the Voight Comp Test in Blade Runner, it is used to distinguish replicants from humans based on emotional responses to questions. I had discovered that several of the characters that you could potentially become could be Utopian Technician, Companion, Ambassador or a scavenger, private investigator, to detective. That in itself was pretty exciting. Once you do get assigned your character, you are given quote unquote a dress code, which is basically includes items that your character would have, as well as what your character would wear. I myself got to be an undercover detective. So I was very happy because this of course is very close to, in some ways, Deckard's character. I was also assigned a name, Jim Kellerman, and there were several items included in my packing list. 
This wasn't necessarily, you didn't have to bring all these items, but they would recommend at least one or two to help you along your quest once you got involved in the event. So some of my items included a raincoat, goggles, a UV pen, a notebook, playing cards, and also they had a unique request for postcards that featured fame fatales of the golden age. So this is pretty exciting. I have to admit I uh, utilized Amazon and eBay to acquire most of these items, and I was very happy to uh, get most of the items that was on my list. From my past experiences with Secret Cinema, I knew that some of the items that I would carry would have to be easily accessible. So I did purchase myself a fanny pack. And I also remember too that there was always one item or two items that, that would be used as currency. This would help you along in your adventures. So on eBay, I actually purchased a whole variety of Fame Fatale postcards ranging from Barbara Stanwyck to Rita Hayworth to Greta Garbo and Joan Crawford. So I was pretty proud of myself with that. For my outfit itself, I wore a black suit and I also purchased a clear rain jacket, which resembled Zora's rain jacket from the Blade Runner film, if you remember her in the film. And from there, on the 25th of May, a few hours prior to 1800, I met up with my friend Allison. We changed into our costumes and rode the underground to the designated lo meeting location in Canning Town, London. On our way there, we were very excited. We'd get a few looks because obviously we weren't quite dressed normal, I guess you could say, to a degree. Also, too, it was rather warm and some parts of the underground was sweltering. So already both of us were starting to sweat pretty good. But as we got closer to Canning Town, we noticed a few others in costume, detective outfits and a few other creative and colorful outfits, to say. So once we did reach Canning Town, we took the escalator up to street level and from there, a member of the LAPD directed us to our location where we would start our adventure. Arriving at the World Terminus location was very exciting. We saw many other people waiting in line for their turn. Luckily, the event that day started at 1800, so Allison and I were essentially part of one of the first groups going through. Now, with Secret Cinema, one thing to keep in mind is they want this to be an interactive experience. So... One of their rules is they do not allow any phones or any cameras of any kind. You actually don't hand those over. Uh, what they do is they give you a bag and they keep it. You have to keep it sealed. They're very, very strict on this. So make sure you do not try to take any kind of footage because it'll end up getting you kicked out and that will just ruin the event for everyone. And what's really cool is once you do show up, you'll see a lot of other people. So it may seem a little chaotic at first. They have certain people, basically points of contact that you're given, that will direct you and put you in the group. Basically, they you'll be in your group assigned basically on what type of job you have. So essentially, they'll take like all the private investigators, detectives, undercover detectives in, in a group. Luckily, both Allison and I were undercover detectives, so this worked out really well. Once we got there, uh, we were given a few items. Uh, we were given an LAPD evidence envelope that contained a few items, such as our LAPD badges. Now, one of the big important things with Secret Cinema is they do not allow any kind of violence. So they don't want people to bring any type of weapons in, and they don't want any like to get any to get physical. So no grabbing of people, uh, being LAPD, uh, if you want to arrest somebody, all you simply had to do was show your badge and tell them that you're LAPD and they had to basically submit to what your requests were. So once we started, the head detective that was with our group gave us a series of instructions. And from there, they let us know that there was an underground rebellion group who called themselves Blackout. And what we needed to do is we need to find as much information about Blackout as we can. And we essentially had to go undercover and get arrested, quote unquote, and try to get as much information as we can. From there, we essentially got arrested and got introduced to several colorful characters along the way. And we end up being 
arrested again by the LAPD. And from there is really when our quest began. I don't want to give away too much information um, because honestly, to experience this and kind of being surprised along the way is really part of the magic of it. I will say when this really began, we were brought into the detective offices. And this was very reminiscent of the film as we get introduced to Detective Bryant. If those of you familiar with Blade Runner know that Detective Bryant is the one that basically gets Rick Deckard to hunt down these replicants. And then from there, we're basically given a job to collect clues and information on Blackout. What we bring back to the police department will hopefully promote us to the rank of Blade Runner. After that, we were essentially released and we went to a bar and uh, we got to meet Gaff. And Gaff in the movie Blade Runner was brilliantly played by Edward James Olmos. I have to admit, one thing that was really amazing with Secret Cinema is the actors that got to play these roles from Blade Runner really stayed in character during the whole time. In a lot of ways, looked like the character and they were the character. That was a lot of fun with this. You will notice being in Secret Cinema that a lot of the event is role-playing. And to get the most out of the event, you really have to take the initiative and be the character that you were assigned, do the job that you were given to the best of your ability. I do have to admit, throughout the event itself as an undercover detective, I came across Pris, who is a replicant, Batty himself, who looked like he was nearly eight feet tall and very, very intimidating, as well as several of the other characters, such as J.F. Sebastian and Hannibal Chu, who worked at the eye manufacturing lab. Besides the characters as well, and the actors that played those characters, when I finally got to explore downtown Los Angeles, I have to admit, the way they rebuilt the set, I should say, was pretty breathtaking. And you were in the movie by that point. You would see advertisements of Pan Am, TDK, also advertisements of visiting the off-world colonies. In my exploration as well, in the two levels of the studio that they built a lot of this, they actually recreated the eye manufacturing lab, the strip club area where Deckard is first looking for Zora, Zora's changing room, Sebastian's apartment, even with all the dolls and the little robots that he had. Also, too, because of the weather, they recommended raincoat, goggles, and umbrellas. And one of the great things, too, was a lot of people had those clear plastic umbrellas that had the color uh, light in the uh, center of it. So that was pretty, pretty amazing. It just helped more with the event. Besides the sets, they also had places where you can get uh, drinks and places that you can eat. They also had a noodle bar as well that was featured in Blade Runner. And so all these elements thrown together really made it a special event. Once the event and your part was completed, they actually would take everybody to the large room where they had three separate screens to accommodate for the amount of people that was there. And you got to watch Blade Runner The Final Cut on the big screen. And I have to give them credit because Secret Cinema made sure the audio was loud. I mean, not to a point where it was annoying, but it was, to me, a perfect, perfect sound. Also, too, they had scenes that they would reenact. And I have to tell you, the actors that played Tyrell, the actors that played Rachel and everybody else really did a great job. And it was so much fun to see these scenes happen on the big screen and then to see the same scenes being played out in, in real life. And along with with the lights that would flash. And if you got a hover car going by, they would have these lights going by you. So you really kind of felt like you were immersed in the film. And uh, that really in itself just made the whole experience invaluable. So I hope you enjoyed listening to this. I have to admit it's the first time that I've, I've done something like this. 
And I want to thank you, Ruth and Darren, for asking me to share this experience. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, it was kind of fun talking about this again and in some ways to relive it in my mind. Well, take care and uh, talk to you guys later. Hello, everyone. I'm Al Sedano, host of Resurrections and Adam Warlock and Thanos Podcast. Over the last few years, this show has covered Adam's life. From his early appearances in Fantastic Four and Four, to his run as Space Jesus on Counter Earth. Now, we have made it midway through the 1970s and Jim Starlin's iconic run on the character. The Magus, Gamora, Pip the Troll, and Adam finally meeting Thanos. Speaking of Thanos, we haven't forgotten about him. We will soon be starting our coverage of Starlin's hardcover graphic novel, The Infinity Relativity, starring Thanos. So join me, along with my regular co-hosts, John Wilson and Brian Zeno, as well as others, on Resurrections, and Adam Warlock and Thanos podcast. Found on iTunes, Stitcher, and Podbean. Resurrectionsadamwarlock.tumblr.com We want to thank Austin for that amazing report, and we wish we could have attended that outstanding event. We'll include links in our show notes about where you can learn more about Secret Cinema. As Austin mentioned, photos weren't allowed at the event, but we'll post a couple of photos on our social media pages of Helm and Allison in their costumes before the event, as well as a couple of promotional photos from Secret Cinema. Before we go, we want to provide our contact information. You can write us directly at radadventuresnetwork at gmail.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram under the name Rad Adventures Network. That's Rad, R-A-D, which is short for Ruth and Darren. You can listen to the show through iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. You can even find the show on YouTube under Rad Adventures Network. And you can always visit radadventuresnetwork.com where you'll find all of the episodes of all of our podcasts, including Trekker Talk, Warlord Worlds, and Xenozoic Xenophiles, as well as Sensational Sluice where we talk about favorite mysteries and Fantastic Fantasies where we discuss our favorite fantasy adventures. If you like the show, please consider leaving a review on iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Play. While you won't find a specific place to review convention correspondence, we'll hope you'll leave a review under Rad Adventures Network. Every review helps the podcast be more likely to be discovered. And on YouTube, we hope you'll subscribe to the channel and give us some likes on the videos. Thanks for listening, and we hope you will come back next time for another new episode of Convention Correspondence. Adventures Network is a proud member of the Comics Podcast Network. For more information, please visit comicspodcast.com. The theme music is Typewriter Symphonic and is licensed from pod5.com. We make no money from this podcast and no copyright infringement is intended. Music